here also right now also it was a uh, muted one okay <laughs> so that's what we tell that if people keep on watching <laughs> then uh, but uh, nobody from perhaps the other batch also might be watching uh, so they're not able to see that okay okay but uh, yes hirwa now you can start huh, uh, your things okay. Uh, there it is not logged in i think that uh, you logged out from that huh yeah i think it is uh, logged out from that okay. Yes. Now I am sharing. Share. Is it visible, sir? Yes. Okay. Am I audible? So my name is Hirva, myself Hirva Pandya, and uh, today I will I am dealing with the topic Vakrokti theory, which uh, which originated by Kuntak. This is my personal information, points to ponder, introduction of Vakrokti theory, levels of Vakrokti, the types of Vakrokti, theory of Vakrokti, and conclusion. What is Vakrokti definition of Vakrokti theory? What is Vakrokti theory? Vakrokti is the theory of poetry which perceives poetry essentially in terms of the language of its expression. He, uh, he means Kuntak took Vakrokti concept from Bhamaha and made broader than him. He states that Vakrokti is of six types. Vakrokti sees the poetic language as language of metaphor and suggestive communication. Thus, irony means Vakrokti is the predominant principle of Zen science. Kuntak rightly said that Vichitra Prakarni Abhida e Vakrokti kehvai che. Six types of levels in Vakrokti phonetic level, lexical level, grammatical level, sentimental level, compositional level, and contextual level. Three types of theory. Sanskrit poetics and language starts from the base that include Shabda and Earth. Neither Shabda nor Earth alone compose poetry. Poetry is not merely linguistic entity. It is rather beautiful expression. This beauty is generated by adding a to its language that may come from artistic categories of words, category like Lakshana. Lakshana represents the secondary meaning of that word. The word is used to signify something else. Alamgar. Alamgar studies literary language and assumes that focus of literarians lies in the figure of speech, grammatical occurrence. This doesn't mean the meaning is ignored. Guna. The uh, Guna theory examines literary composition in terms of quality both of form and meaning. Types of Vakrati, there are six types of Vakrati. Varna Vinyas Vakrata. Varna Vinyas Vakrata shows itself the arrangement of sounds. All Shabda Lankar's schemes like alliteration here are example of the poem in which Vakrata, this Vakrata has been used. Love laugh at locksmith 
which is written by Shakespeare and break 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 which is written by Alfred Tennyson in both the work the Varna Vinya Svakrata has been uh, shown. Pad Purvard Vakrata. Pad Purvard Vakrata is a devitation in the choice lexical item. Pad Purvard Vakrata concern with the time, uh, case, number, person. Simply means that a word which is coming before that word, but it affected the next word. It is called as a Pad Purvard Vakrata. Here is an example. Loud sound the X. Read out doubling strokes on strokes. Vakya Vakrata. Vakya Vakrata occurs at the sentence level as it care the crop full blind. Kuntaka says that includes all artha alankars like simile and paradox. Prakran Vakrata. The talk or tale which is already told but it is again told with a new interpretation it called as a prakran vakrata example sairandri pad parard vakrata a word which affect to, to the next word of sentence it called as a pad, pad parard vakrata prabandh vakrata prabandh vakrata is concerned with the totality of the work in all its aspect it is difficult to find striking example of this kind in English literature. Kuntaka says that apart from the six type, there may exist several kinds of vakrokti depending on the creative genius of individual poet. Simply means that the work for whom it was written, the person or character is not present in real life. So conclusion. So to conclude, it can be said that Vakrokti theory of Kuntaka is quite appropriate and systematic. This work established by him is concerned not only parts, but it is also totality of art. These are my resources. Thank you. Oh, Hirva, uh, how many level of Vakrokti? Can you explain anyone? There is a six level of Vakrokti. And that is a uh, sentimental level, which I can explain. In the sentimental level, there is a... Uh, sorry, I will not explain you. There is a six... Sir, I am asking. Yes. Have you connect Sairandri with uh, Prakrana Yes. I will connect. I connect Sairandri with Prakrana Vakrata because uh, in a real in real text there is a Draupadi is not in love with Karna, but in Sairandri, uh, Sir, we know Joshi show on him. Uh, as a lover or a, what we call as a lover or mistress of Karn. I'm sharing my screen. Now it's Yes.
It visible? Yes. Hello, I am Hina Basarviya and today I am deal with this, the theory of RAS. This is my information and introductions. The theory of RAS being uh, central Indian aesthetic or Sanskrit poetics which was developed around in 600s AD. The founder of the Ras theory is Bharat Muni. He was uh, between 1st century BCE and 3rd century CE. Now it's visible. Camera is. Shall I start, sir? Hello, friend. I am Hina Basarviya and today uh, you will see this image of the Natya Sastra and Bharat Muni and we all get the idea what what I today deal and now I today deal with the theory of Russ. This is my personal information and introductions. The theory of Russ uh, also uh, center Indian aesthetic or uh, Sanskrit poetics which developed in, around in 600 HD, AD and founder of Ras theory by Bharat Muni who lived in some time between a first, cent, first, first century BC and third century e, CE. It was uh, developed by the rhetoric, rhetorician and philosopher, uh, philosopher Abhinav Gupta who applied to all varieties of theater and poetry the principle of human feeling according to Bharat Muni, uh, he also developed the nine, nine type of the uh, feelings and nine type of the ras. The it's are the del delight, light, uh, lighter, sorrow, anger, energy, fear, disgust, heroism and astonishment. And all our contemporary, we all see this uh, various ras in this uh, name of the like Erotic, comic, pathetic, furious, heroic, terrible, odious, marvelous, and equitistic. And Ras theory is generally considered as an 
explanatory formula for the aesthetic experience of the Indian drama and the literature. And Bharat, Mun, Bharat Muni, Natya Sastra is considered as the source of this theory. And Ras literally means test your sev and or sever. Sever means enjoyable and use the don donate the essence poetry. It significance the peculiar experience that poetry affords us. The Ras school stresses the ex experiential and subjective side of poetic meaning. And definition of the Ras theory, the Ras school held the essence of the poetry to be a quality distinct for form in the determinate which are more commonly known a character such as natural situation, human action, and emotions. Our, the Ras theory also represents the um, human characters in a natural action, situation, human action, action, and emotions. This theory is not, not essentially an imitation of nature, but also include the life and emotions through the natural depicted. And Ras is uh, regarded as extraordinary and unworldly. The pleasure which accompanies it is uh, transcendental. The, the, according to Bharat Muni state, say that the Ras theory, theory is uh, no compositions can proceed without Ras. It means the, uh, the Ras is a basic theory. And main idea of the Ras theory, that poetry is and expressions of emotions and that emotions are objectified and disinterestedly to wildly believe that poetry affords the higher kind of emotions delight is also accomplished accepted but the delight of joy of the self revelations or truth or higher contemplative and universal spirit it is a particularly Indian through some affinity with the so, uh, scholarly theory art can be seen. And distinctions in the poetry between two classes of em emotions. Here we find the two, uh, two uh, classes of emotions. First is a per permanent or dominant and the ten, uh, transcends. Uh, transcends means short time of that em emotion are the there. There is a dif uh, differ in natural and functions, and Aristotle may be held to distinctions of the of this nature. And Aristotle, according to Butcher, meant by the character the permanent dis dispositions of the mind, which levels and certain condition of wills. It means emotions are not uh, emotion are not be a long long to con condition of the your mind, but uh, emotion the more transient emotion, the passing mood of feeling. It, it means the emotion are also dependent of the short short time and the only dependent of your mood. Now, since both characters and emotion are represent in the poetry and character is probably that Aristotle taught to more permanent uh, dispositions defining character to be expressible through the transient mood. And according to C.K. Ogden, perceiving that certain feeling, such, uh, such as doubt and belief are emotions that uh, do not leave behind any permanent dispositions in this mind. The dependent upon the, some emotion is also given rise to them. And that uh, so, so in the art through, the certain sensibility one because the nature the latter spring from the former and emotion is obviously and many literary critics make the distinctions without clearly knowing it it's a their con, uh, con, uh, concrete opposition or the critical work and now i conclude with this uh, abhina gupta scott that is no poetry without rust it means uh, Ras is a basic to all those uh, all these theories, and the uh, and I can understand the Ras is always useful key to understanding of the poetry and provide it with the critical tools to examine an Indian art form and their emotional and aesthetic impact. Thank you, and this is my verse citation.
according to you what is more delightful in reference to rasathiya story or poetry according to my point of view ras theater is a very delightful the poetry is effective story rather in poetry is uh, because the uh, you uh, some uh, you read that poetry and you think uh, and uh, what what poet say and you, you uh, definitely find the meaning and uh, you enjoy the uh, work of poetry of this Yes, perfect. Yes, in a ba. According to you, which is more? Yes. which is according to you which is more appropriate form to understand rasa theory poetry or story yes you asked the same question of the amisha ali amina asked and uh, according to my point of view the uh, i will uh, most delightly to the theory of ras is uh, also uh, uh, the poetry you can understand you thinks uh, what you say you catch up the uh, the old feelings like the uh, you uh, some poet write the er heroistic way and you can understand uh, what the poet uh, the saying and the i got the in poetry is to understand this yes a story story you can also understand in proper way but my point of view i i just read the poem and i get the idea and story you read a uh, proper way and many ras uh, you find in story and poetry also both have find uh, so many ras but uh, according to my point of view you poetry are also rare, uh, give to idea in what uh, what you say in this way I'm sharing my screen. I'm just sharing. It is. 
इस केस में पहले now it is okay i'm starting uh, today uh, my topic i'm going to deal with the topic literary and scientific reading of poem mohandas karamchand in reference to practical criticism and modern uh, modern criticism uh, these are my points uh, like brief introduction of neo criticism and i have forgot to mention the practical criticism that also i'm going to deal with about the poem about the poet meena kandas uh, Kandasamy, literary and scientific study of poem Mohandas Karamchand and conclusions. So let me start with my uh, the brief introduction of new criticism and the practical criticism. In the first half of half of twentieth century, the term new criticism came into the light. T. S. Eliot are uh, considered as the father of the new criticism, and the new criticism is mainly focused on. Uh, Uh, certain literary devices like uh, specifically metaphors irony uh, tension and the paradox uh, the, the main uh, there are many new critics are there the names of them are ellen tet robert pen warren uh, warren john crow ransom clint uh, brook william ampson and f r lewis in that the uh, I. A. Richard is the one. I. A. Richard is the one who began the practical criticism in the 1920 uh, with the series of experiments by the Cam uh, in Cambridge University. Like what he used to do, uh, he collect the poems, remove the name of writer, and he gave it to uh, his student, and then he told them to analyze the uh, po poems. so that uh, so that students can analyze it what they understand by the words of poem not by the identity of poet or any other references uh, this are reference i have taken from the poetry foundation and the another one is about the poem i have given here the link of original poem uh, if anyone wants to read that the poem mohandas karamchand was was written by meena kandasamy the poem was highly inspired by silvia plath's poem daddy uh, that poem um, poems link also i have mentioned here uh, this poem is very much related with the albert einstein's quote like generations to come will scarcely believe that such a one as this work the earth is flesh and blood in this poem also uh, meena kandasamy was uh, what is anything wrong okay um in this uh, poem also meena kandas swami deconstruct the image of gandhi like uh, uh, she uh, as we uh, how we see gandhi is uh, as the ideal level of uh, uh, ideal level but she talk about all the mess uh, talk about all the mess which created by gandhi um, the poem is narrated by the dalit like i mean harijans and he he or she talked about like um, that how gandhi given them to the label of harijans and how how that becomes um, very much trouble uh, trouble and the problematic for them the title mohandas karamchand is also reflecting the disrespect for gandhi uh, then about the poetess meena kandaswami meena kandaswami is award prize winning novelist and poet best known for her work when i hit you Uh, she was born in 12 october 1918 uh, 1984 in chennai uh, and most of his work was written on the theme of disman uh, dis uh, dismantling hindutva and the hard line right wing rule of the bhartiya janata party in india her work is an active resistance against gender and caste based on violent uh, violence and she describe her writing process as taking the, things that rattle her and sm uh, smuggling them into english so here is uh, some of his famous works and uh, i am not mentioning that and here here i gave link um, if anyone wants to read more about her and the la, uh, the fourth is literary and scientific study of uh, of the poem mohandas and karamchand uh, when 
what is my first impression i want to tell about that first that what is my first impression when i read the title of the poem when i read the title mohandas karamchand so as we all have that mentality like uh, gandhi as a ideal level so i thought that might be uh, in this poem gandhi were will be praised or uh, poet poetess might be going to praise her him but when i read the poem i'm starting uh, started reading poem i found that uh, no it is not like that he, uh, she is deconstructing the po- uh, gandhi as the first line begins with who 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 mahatma sorry no truth non violence stop it enough taboo this very for a beginning line show that poet uh, poetess is frustrated and hatred and ha- hating to uh, ha- have so many hatred towards gandhi the father of the india the uh, the next uh, paragraph is that trash is long overdue you need to thorough review your tax free souls stimulated over bounds we gonna sue you the congress sue the first is if we read uh, she connect historical reference here like uh, dandi march we all as we all know dandi march is one of one of the satyagrah we, we can call it satyagrah which is about the salt so uh, that information also i have given here the link if anyone wants to read and the another one is we gonna sue you a uh, congress sue so here he use the word congress uh, sue people human cannot be sue if uh, cannot be sure if we read it scientifically but literally it, she used that word to uh, show uh, humiliate gandhi uh, then next uh, next paragraph is gone half kuku you called us name you dubbed us parihas harijans goody goody guys of the god god ram ram hey ram boo so here we came to know that okay she is uh, the poetess is particularly belong from the uh, uh, harijan uh, harijan or the narrator is belong from the uh, harijan caste and scientifically if we see that half kuku human cannot be kuku if we if we read it but here she took reference of history as uh, there is one reference of history here here like uh, his mother uh, the gandhi's mother putli bai had strong religion faith a uh, strong li- religion faith and uh, she is uh, doing uh, kopila vrata and for that she used to uh, see kuku and then eat she has that ritual so one day she wait a long and kuku will not uh, kuku will not uh, go, wasn't come so what gandhi did is he he disappointed and uh, he go outside the house and he make a voice of kuku and uh, then her mother get her mother slapped him and he got so disappointed like my my son is uh, saying lies so from that time he started uh, he start he take that sphere that i'm not going to lie in my i'm not going to say lie in my life but as we see that all his all that these things are uh, his the sphere are broken out then the next one is don't ever act like a holy saint we can see thorough you impure you remember how you dealt with your poor wife but they wrote your books they made your life the first two lines showing dark and uh, dark side of gandhi as we all have, know the psychological concept that each person has a, 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 a good side and bad side so uh, the more the people focus on on which side it is become the person's identity like if uh, um, someone someone is, most of the people see gandhi as a ideal as a good, a good in good light so he he is become he was become ideal but if it doesn't mean that he don't have dark side he has dark side so that dark side is here poet as see and he mentioned that uh, here saint is uh, taken as a metaphor uh, saint is we can take as a metaphor of pureness that is also here is showing and the third line is carrying historical reference and like uh, remember how you uh, how you deal with your poor wife the, this reference is like uh, um, once his wife got uh, get ill and uh, she has uh, she is suffering from pneumonia and the british doctor told that he has uh, she has to Uh, give medicines which is not from made in india 
so gandhi denied that i'm not going to inject uh, uh, foreign medicines in the uh, in the body of my wife and her wife uh, his wife was died but then he got into the malaria and he permit everything to every everything to the british doctors that you can do whatever medicines you want to use you can use but save me so that reference poet is used here and the that thing here is reflected and then the last uh, the second paragraph is they stuffed you up the imposed uh, imposter truth and sew you up filled you with virtue and gave you all the glossy deeds enough reasons we still lick you you knew you you bloody well knew caste won't go they won't let it go it hunt us now and the way you do with a spooky stick a airy laugh or two the word stuff you sew you and lick you is uh, if we see scientifically it is not possible on an, uh, for any human being but it is taken uh, here as a literary approach, approach says that the poet use it to show glory an unnecessary respect given to mahatma then the maintain a tone of the poem aggression and the frustration uh, towards gandhi is also reflected in this uh, in these lines then the last paragraph is but they killed you the neck you your blood with mud was go uh, go goi go sadist fool you killed your body many times before this too bapu bapu you big fraud we hate you uh, here we see the reference of winston Ch uh, churchill like he used this word neck uh, neck fakir for the gandhi so that reference also we see here and also the word bapu is directly indi indicated now so uh, we come to know that okay this poem is not about any mohandas uh, mohandas karamchan but it is for gandhi ji or gandhi bapu so the main emotions of poem aggression and uh, anger is also reflected here thank you and these are my citations Yes, Himanshu, my question is, how do you connect the poem with the Einstein quote? Uh, Einstein's quote is, uh, is about like uh, how, just a second, let me uh, read the Einstein's quote. The quote is, generations to come will scarcely believe that such a one as this walked the earth is flesh and blood. Like it is about like one person who is walked away, but behind that there is uh, he he created so many mess so uh, that uh, that thing that emotion is also reflected by the poet poetess here so i connect that both yes himanshi uh, you mind uh, you or uh, uh, your presentation also a poet deconstruction the life of gandhi and uh, which side you like the most poet your gandhi and what are your view in this poem uh, in my slides also i have mentioned that each person has good side and bad side so we cannot judge the person by any particular point of view that we have to see that he has good and bad both these sides so we have uh, so we have to stay neutral not in this side, not in that
Yeah, is it visible in full screen? Okay, so uh, I am Amy. Sh I am Amy Sharwani, and uh, today, uh, it, as we have the fourth day of presentation, and we are dealing with the paper of criticism, Indian uh, poetics, and uh, <clears throat> I am going to deal with the Rasa theory in uh, Mary Sari. It is a poem by Sabika Nakvi, and before I start uh, my presentation i would like to uh, say something about the founder of uh, rasa theory uh, uh, that is bharat muni uh, there is a one quote of raja shekhara uh, he uh, he is saying that it is not the object described in literature that give us pleasure it is creative use of language that make it pleasant so uh, uh, these are the so, uh, there are many figures in the ancient time uh, in uh, India uh, who have uh, introduced us to the uh, Indian poetics. Indian poetics is a very wide uh, area itself. And uh, uh, as he says that it is not something, uh, the object or the content which is make us uh, pleasant while we, we are reading, but it is the uh, game of only the using of uh, language or uh, how you are uh, creatingly uh, using the aspect of the uh, any literature or any, uh, any uh, form of literature. So uh, Bharat Muni uh, is, has introduced this Rasa theory in his, uh, in his book of uh, Natya Shastra. And uh, uh, in the Nat Natya Shastra, there are 36 chapters, 6,000 uh, shlokas. And Rasa theory and Bhava theory has introduced uh, in the sixth number or seventh number chapters. And uh, uh, for, for uh, Bharat Muni has written this uh, text uh, with very uh, effective purpose. Uh, in the Treta Yuga, um, uh, Brahma, Lord Brahma has uh, uh, has told him to write uh, Natya Shastra, and he has uh, Natya Shastra has known as uh, uh, fifth Vedas and uh, uh, this uh, and it is uh, another name of Natya Veda and it is uh, formed uh, from the four Vedas uh, that that is uh, that those all are Vedas are in the Indian philosophy. So uh, now I am going to deal with the, the slides of uh, what is Rasa theory. Basically, when we heard the word uh, like Rasa, we got, got many. Uh, dictionary uh, glossaries uh, like uh, uh, essence taste flavor uh, juice sap uh, so many things we uh, th come to know uh, about that and uh, in the literature rasa is something uh, which is uh, based on the two sentiments that is uh, rhetorical sentiments and emotional sentiments which will be uh, deal uh, we will deal uh, later on um, there are three aspects of this theory, that is bhav vibhav, uh, that is rise of emotion. Uh, in that, the two types, uh, so, sub point are there, uh, that is alamban vibhav and uddipan vibhav. Uh, alamban with vibhav is something depending on something and anubhav vib, uh, uddipan vibhav is encouraging. Uh, when we see uh, some play or the drama uh, on the stage, uh, we can see this uh, both the uh, aspects of uh, this vibhav or vibhav bhav that how rise of emotion is depend on this uh, both the aspect uh, anubhav bhav that is all about expression vyabhichar bhav uh, that is not primary uh, emotions but uh, reinforce the primary emotions uh, it is something like uh, not static in our mind or somewhere in our uh, uh, surface of the emotions but it is it is like uh, rapidly come and goes come and goes it is going on in our mind so uh, there are uh, uh, basically Bharat Muni has introduced us uh, like eight or probably eight or nine rasas uh, in his uh, Natya Shastra uh, and then later on uh, uh, list has increased like I have put uh, the 10 uh, types of that is Shringar, Hasya, Karun, Rudra, Veer, Bhayanak, Vibhatsa, Adbhut, Sham and Vatsal. And uh, for that Ras, uh, the Sthai Bhav are there, Rati, Hasya, Shok, Krod, Utsah, Bhai, Chugupsa, 
विस्मय निर्वेद एंड वात्सल्य एज आई हैव सेड दैट देयर आर रेटोरिकल सेंटिमेंट्स एंड इमोशनल सेंटिमेंट्स सो भरत हैज भरत हैज इंट्रोड्यूस विद द रसस लाइक व्हेन वी गो टू द इंग्लिश डिक्शनरी सेट इरोटिक कॉमिक पैथेटिक फ्यूरियस हीरोइक टेरिबल ऑडियस मार्वेलस एंड क्वाइटेस्टिक एंड भावाज आर delight laughter sorrow anger energy fear disgust heroism and uh, astonishment rasa siddhan the earliest exponent uh, of rasa siddhan uh, is Nat- natya shastra of bharata as i said uh, rasa siddhan uh, rasa siddhan is founded on four types of acting angi kapinai vachi kapinai uh, aharya abhinay and satvik abhinay uh we when we heard that uh, this is the book contains uh, the title of the book is natya shastra we we can uh, get the first thought about it okay it will be depend on all it will it will contains the uh, information or the detail of uh, natya shastra but it has uh, uh, the artistic artistic we can say uh, like it goes on natya shastra uh, natya and then uh, literature as well as music as well as dancing all the uh, aspects the, it it has contained it itself after bharata several, uh, several noted scholars are like uh, bhattinayak lollata uh, shamkuka abhinav gupta mammat and anand vardhan have added to rasa siddhanta rasa theory in meri sari uh, meri sari uh, it is the poem uh, which is uh, recite in uh, by sabika abbas nakvi now we will see the how poem is contains the rasa theory uh, i have hyperlinked this video and you will find the whole video uh, when the writer is only reciting uh, her poem main theme is it is depend on uh, sari that uh, uh, we can say in vastra in hindi it is uh, uh, like vastra he is talking about the uh, she is talking about the uh, sari but uh, integ- integral part or the integral uh, purpose of this poem i can find is women and woman is the central uh, pa- part of this poem uh, here i point out that sari uh, how she has portrayed the whole poem like uh, at multi purpose a friend of the body it uh, traps like wh- whoever uh, sari is like something whoever traps it it will be friend for uh, that body uh, blanket at night it is the kind of uh, symbol of peace a mother's hard earned money that is, uh, that is the symbol of hardship sari has a metaphor for life as he, she has portrayed in his poem challenging to mold itself uh, where, uh, wherever required sari is something like uh, whenever you want to uh, mold it it will mold Uh, at at per your requirement a uh, symbol of love a means of protest to hang the growing fa- uh, fascist ideology a symbol of resistant a symbol of the farmer's protest a woman's existence uh, she has very beautifully uh, portrayed all this idea in uh, her poem i have uh, uh, i am not able to uh, deal with the uh, whole poem because po- poem is the very longest and i have sit, uh, put here uh, very selected lines from the poem that uh, in english version original poem is in hindi so your sari is like a waterfall waves fluttering in the thunderstorm uh, poet is is asking uh, uh, her mom her mother to uh, uh, that uh, how how she is looking in the sari so we will uh, we can see that uh, how her, her mother is replied that your sari is like a waterfall waves fluttering in the thunderstorm here i have put the lines and by the according that how we are getting various rasas by those lines my sari is that owning which you like which you uh, which you call the sky my sari is that floor on which you live Sa- this sari is the waves on uh, on the river on which we set sw- uh, sail boat of love uh, these uh, these lines um, contains the ras- uh, rasa of shringar Uh, with the sari we tie a new a noose around the shadows of fascism and uh, she uh, very wonderfully she has uh, uh, taken the references of historical uh, events like uh, wherever um, 
women have has to face some, such kind of uh, um, injustice in the past uh, in the uh, in this line we can uh, get uh, research like heroic and furious uh, you two have tired a lot of times you have put a lot of holes into this sari torn uh, torn uh, it from many places so it is uh, talking about uh, uh, rape and uh, how women are facing uh, this kind of terrible situations and further but even i am a marvelous uh, seamstress across each hole i have stitched a page even more colorful than the last here uh, she is a poet poet is, is talking about uh, a heroic uh, uh, we can say that it is it the lines are contains the heroic rus and uh, when, wherever you used the scissors of uh, casteism i have stitched on a beautiful page from savitri phule sari wherever you have made uh, sectarian gashes uh, there i have taken thread of shabba and stitched on motifs when you started burning my anchal i replaced it with the anchal of uh, iron sari when you threw acid on the, uh, on he, on the hem i asked Lush, uh, lakshmi to do patchwork on it uh we can say that how she has uh, um put this uh, all the historical events in uh, her poetry and uh, she is able to uh, able to make us feel that uh, rasa of heroic furious and odious listen uh, this sari is not the attire of your nationalism it is that approver that echoed in the battlefield of kurukshetra it is that coffin that buried patriarchy it is a garden decorated by the down trod uh, then these line are conta uh, containing the karun ras and rotra ras you are always very curious to know what lies behind my blouse uh, behind the blouse of sari lies the uh, pro uh, protrusions protrusions of my breast filled to take freedom to the uh, veins my ribs sing the uh, melodious of peace when i wear the sari my navel will show uh, that navel uh, which, which is a vortex of uh, perseverance uh, uh, perver, pers, uh, and by this line we can say that uh, she is uh, she is uh, talking about uh, um, she has taken reference with two or three bollywood songs and uh, this uh, reflecting in these lines and this is the end part of uh, uh, his uh, her poem that my sari my black sari my colorful sari my rainbow sari uh, my uh, disheveled and this obliging unconscious navel uh, sari this is ending line uh, ending lines containing the marvelous uh, poetic and pathetic rasa sat hai so the poem has main rasa like heroic and furious if we read a whole poem uh, then we can say that the main tone of this poem is a heroic and furious here poem is created in a very metaphorical way and uh, that uh, that is the style of creating which is making this poem extremely emotionful uh, which we, uh, we we feel those all emotions by the uh, sthai bhav Uh, that is the emotional sentiments in uh, that is uh, uh, we have within us so these are my work citation thank you okay so questions yes who uh, himanshi is asking Like you mentioned that uh, uh, Udipan Vibha. So, do you know any example about that? Uh, that how the concept is connected? So, Udipan is Vibha. Uh, Vibha is something like uh, if we see in Apignan Shakuntala, then uh, when the meeting of uh, uh, Shakunta Shakuntala. and uh, the hero i forgot the name uh, they when they meeting in the garden so the guard, uh, how the kalidas has portrayed the situation or the circumstances there uh, how the garden uh, has 
gloomy and uh, uh, it he makes it very romantic uh, in a very romantic way so we can say that uh, that is the uti utipan vibhav to uh, to be happen uh, meeting of shakuntala and uh, her the uh, Yes, Anisha. You mentioned your slide. The uh, Rasidhan encountered in four type of actions, and uh, you now find Angika Abhinaya. It means a non-verbal expression or gesture. If you connect the Mary Sari poem. So you are asking that where is uh, Angika Abhinaya? In uh, I have taken her poem, Mary Sari. So uh, see. Ras theory is not like in uh, uh, that you contain the every text, right? When uh, when someone is performing in this on this stage, so uh, it is for uh, that particular person. Angi kabhi naya. When you are uh, uh, you are wanting to tell something to what your audience, but you are not using your verbal verbal style. That is non-verbal style. and uh, for that when uh, when someone is going to perform this poem on the stage there it can be uh, possible so if you are uh, uh, taking all the reference in the poem so it will be not there so i when i i was uh, referring this uh, angi kabhinaya in this slide when i was introducing you to uh, rasa theory what is rasa theory and uh, i have uh, mentioned the, i have uh, whatever i am able to find rasas in the poem Hello friends, myself Divya Shetty. My today's topic is uh, my today's topics uh, topic is uh, uh, you uh, you. Young, young young philosophy behind archetypal, uh, archetypal criticism this is my personal information young's theory of uh, uh, philosophy uh, of psychological uh, individuation in indi individuation the overall goal of the individual uh, for uh, young is to integrate both the co conscious and unconscious elements of the psyche with these elements Uh, having both a personal and collective dimension the process by which a person become a psychological individual a separate individual uh, indivi indivis uh, indivisible 
unity or world recognize his innermost uh, uniqueness and he identified the process with becoming one's own self or self realization which is distinguished more, uh, from ego uh, cent centered centeredness and individualism uh, here here are uh, three dimension of uh, self uh, individual uh, individualism that uh, first is in youth uh, uh, first is in youth the introvert side of the personality through using well one's education work marriage etc second is the mi middle age develops while middle age develops uh, the introvert uh, side uni time the opposite opposites within the psyche through reflection dreams analyzing analysis uh, spiritual uh, exercise therapy etc and the later part of the life that is called the transcendent function which brings all this structure of the self into full individuation and uh, intergeneration on a higher level these are uh, three uh, uh, parts that uh, archetypal literary criticism moves in several direction that first is textual in textual direction, direction the closer of a new criticism that is in the plot uh, characters imer, uh, imel, imagery and setting of the text second is uh, intertextual like the intertextual uh, critic it connects the archetypes in a particular text with similar patterns in world world literature often time it such a uh, widespread plots as the quest journey character uh, such as a uh, wise old man or mother figure imagery such as light and darkness or setting such as forest or uh, desert psychological uh, uh, psychological direction that the study can uh, then explore the psychological relevance of such archetypes to the character within the text such uh, as the study of uh, the individuation process what christopher booker uh, mentioned that he uh, uh, first he mentioned seven basic plots that first is overcoming the monster uh, that we connect uh, with macbeth that uh, in uh, macbeth not, not uh, like monster but in the evil side of uh, lady macbeth and macbeth there is uh, there is there in the play that rags to riches what macbeth uh, wants to become a king that uh, that uh, that is uh, reflects uh, as rags to riches that the quest journey the quest journey also that macbeth uh, inner desire or we can say that uh, it's reflect uh, the ambition of uh, macbeth that uh, he uh, first he become uh, first he, uh, he uh, try to become he wants to uh, poor, uh, from poor to to be a king then voyage and return the war be, uh, is uh, reflects in this uh, basic plot comedy and tragedy also there and uh, rebirth the stories that uh, um, in macbeth uh, the story uh, also uh, rebirth uh, within all these seven plot uh, patterns emerge uh, emerges a, a general, uh, generalized archetypal plot which is the hero or heroine begins action from a position of incompleteness or frustration then falls under the shadow of dark power in a series series of conflicts in macbeth we can clearly uh, see while uh, macbeth uh, macbeth met uh, three witches that uh, the, uh, on, uh, on after meeting uh, uh, three witches that uh, dark power in her in his uh, inner uh, power of uh, inner desire to be a king is the converting in uh, dark uh, power that in wrong manner uh, by killing uh, uh, dunkard uh, which is in series uh, of conflicts that uh, story uh, uh, while plot uh, moving further that uh, conflicts uh, in uh, macbeth or lady macbeth we can say that that series of conflicts uh, in the end of the um, lady macbeth uh, uh, psychological disturbance is also uh, there and uh, finally emerges by uh, exper experiencing uh, a resolution of the conflicts 
Jungian philosophy, uh, psychological pattern patterns found in these seven basic plots. First is the hero or heroine in an Im, uh, imperfect human being on a life Im, imperfect in, imperfect uh, on the on the stage that um, they are uh, not uh, like as a good manner. They uh, and uh, on a life journey of uh, personal transformation to maturity, consisting of uh, wholeness and self-realization. In religion term, uh, Jung is more, Jung most of, uh, most of his uh, psychological uh, analysis is based on religious term. That this goal is reached with the union of the protagonist soul with uh, the transcendent one. Wholeness consists of a balanced uh, integration of four qualities strength, rational order, emotional sympathy, and uh, in intuitive understanding of other person. These four uh, qualities uh, we can, uh, we can uh, see in Macbeth uh, or uh, other person uh, on both the conscious and unconscious level. This whole uh, unconscious level that uh, we can say that regrets of uh, Lady Macbeth. This wholeness is symbolized by light power. This uh, light power that means uh, good uh, something uh, good manner. This uh, self realization process overcome ego egotism and uh, one sadness that comes from having only some of the four qualities on both the uh, conscious and unconscious level. This one sadness is symbolized by dark power this we can say that uh, macbeth and lady macbeth uh, their desire their inner desire to, uh, to be the uh, macbeth's uh, uh, to wants to, lady macbeth to wants to uh, see macbeth as a king this is my word citation thank you Yes, questions here. Yeah. Uh, so, Vidya, my question is, uh, as you mentioned in your slide that uh, uh, psychological direction of archety archetypal literary criticism, so I don't understand that concept. So, can you elaborate? Psychological direction that uh, first uh, we, uh, we can say that in a uh, text uh, that uh, uh, plot character or set this uh, these three uh, uh, these three stages are uh, are there and then we uh, come to know that intertext that uh, in intertext that we uh, we can say that uh, uh, the uh, uh, vices or uh, uh, the good or bad manner are there and. Uh, uh, in uh, uh, for uh, you uh, by uh, yeah. how Jungian psychology is dealing with uh, emotional sympathy you have uh, referred uh, in this slide of when you are dealing with the Lady Macbeth. So how it is dealing with Indian psychology is particular dealing with the uh, third character. Yes, uh, uh, Union psychology in that uh, Young mentioned that uh, self-realization uh, that uh, self-realization we can see in uh, Lady, uh, Lady Macbeth's character that uh, after uh, Lady, uh, Lady, uh, Lady Macbeth, uh, uh, while uh, she realized that uh, she did wrong, that uh, th uh, then we uh, we can say the soliloquy of Lady Macbeth, that uh, there is the uh, emotional uh, th uh, th this uh, union uh, psychology uh, gives the emotional sympathy on. Uh, Yes, next. Hello. 
Hello, myself Divya Parmar, and uh, today I am going to present funny theory. Let me share my screen. is visible it is visible yes. so my topic is dhwani uh, sampraday or dhwani siddhan this is my information points to ponder what is poetics what is indian poetics and what is dhwani theory conclusion and citation what is poetics According to the Oxford Dictionary, poetics means the art of writing poetry. And uh, this second one is from uh, Oxford, uh, the study of linguistic techniques in poetry and literature. So, uh, uh, poetry, uh, poetics means uh, how should we write a poetry in a perfect way. If we see poetics uh, with the context of a literature, we can surely tell that literature is not only about writing poetry, uh, drama, novel, short story, short story, etc. But literature is all about the art and creativity. Uh, in the con uh, context of art, there are so many uh, skills we can uh, see that uh, uh, which leads by the creativity. Uh, the term politics, uh, uh, poetics uh, also connected with the idea of a sy systematic writing of poetry. Uh, the term poetics means the study of literature. The study of literature and also uh, the, uh, uh, the right way how to write a poetry or any literary work. It is, a, uh, uh, it is uh, the thing poetics. As we know, literature is a part of uh, part of if art and art is a source of a eternal happiness. Uh, uh, if we see uh, with uh, this line with the layman's uh, con concept, uh, uh, whatever we, uh, we are doing, the ultimate or we can say that uh, eternal, uh, uh, eternal aim is to be a happiness. So art is a part of uh, whatever we are doing uh, it just cause uh, ultimate our ultimate aim is to uh, get happiness or uh, get entertainment out of them so what is indian poetics we can consider indian poetics as a great heritage of india under the term of indian poetics there are so many schools or we can call uh, sampradaya uh, all the schools give uh, information about how to write a poetry or piece of literature in a systematic way. In, a, in Indian poetics, we can find so many schools like Ras, uh, Ras Sampradaya, Dhvani Sampradaya, Alankar Sampradaya, uh, etc. Uh, all are said to how to uh, write, uh, write a poetry in a perfect way. What should be there in a poetry or what should be not there in poetry. When we come to know about all the school of Indian poetics, we find the way to get happiness by the reading of that piece of art. If we uh, uh, come uh, aware about all the schools of uh, uh, poetics, then we get a right meaning uh, out of them poetry or any literary work. In Indian poetics, uh, it is not only connected with the writing, but it is also connected with the drama, painting, dancing, etc. So uh, the, uh, the all sampradayas are only not connected with the a particular term of a literature. It also connects with all other all uh, activity like drama, painting, dancing, etc. Continue. Uh, Indian poetics is written in a Sanskrit language, and there were a uh, 
uh, many Sanskrit scholars in India who uh, who gave their views upon how to write a literature by the systematic way or a real ideology to write a perfect literature. Uh, in Sanskrit language, there is a word for literature. It is a sahitya. It, 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 Etymologically means a coordination or balance or contact to uh, bit, uh, to the literature. So here in Indian poetics deals with the coordination of all school of a poetics in literary work. Any uh, we can not uh, write a literature or read a literature by the knowledge of any one uh, school of uh, these theories. We uh, we have to uh, aware, aware about all the schools or all the theories which is included in the po poetics. Let's look upon the different schools of poetics. Uh, Alankar theory, uh, which is uh, called in English poetic figures. Rasa theory, aesthetic pleasure. Riti, style. Guna, its attributes. Dhvani is suggestion. Uh, Vakrati, obliquity. And Ochitya, pro property. Uh, so my uh, main topic is uh, Dhvani theory, uh, all known as a suggestion uh, school. Dhvani theory come into the limelight in the 9th century. Anand Vardhana was the founder of this theory. Anand Vardhana was a Kashmiri poet and known as the uh, Dhvani uh, Dhvanika. Uh, he he gave uh, his text Dhvanyalok. That's why he, he called it uh, Dhvanika. He dominated Indian poetics from 9th to 12th C. Anand Vardhana wrote text Dhvanyalok where he discussed about Dhvani. Uh, according to Anand Vardhana, feelings can not be objectively brought to a conscious by liberal expression. So, uh, uh, means direct sentence. It can be made an object of a direct experience only through the indirect expression. Experience, expression. So, uh, in poetry, if uh, 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 whatever thing a uh, poet wants to tell to us or wants to write to us, it is said directly, then we cannot find any type of happiness or any uh, type of aesthetic pleasure uh, to read that. Uh, but if uh, in poetry there is uh, some line, uh, we can say that uh, we are we can able to read be between the lines. Then, then only we can uh, find uh, aesthetic pleasure from the uh, literary work. So it means hidden meaning of the poem is the deeper aspect of theory and it is a dhvani. The types of a dhvani by Anand Vardhana. Vastu, uh, Vastu dhvani. Uh, Abhi, it is called in Abhidha dhvani. Some rare facts or thoughts or idea implied means uh, thoughts of a poet or a uh, writer implied by uh, this Vastu Dhvani, Alankara Dhvani, by uh, some figure, if, if poet uses the, some figure of a speech to uh, tell his, uh, tell, uh, tell his thoughts to us, uh, it is uh, in, uh, included in Alank Alankara Dhvani. The third one is Rasa Dhvani. It is also called Abhyanjana. Rasa is evoked. It consists in suggesting bhavas, feelings, or sentence. Uh, this uh, uh, this type of dhvani uh, we can see uh, we can see in various poetry by reading. We feel a uh, uh, feeling of uh, love, or sometimes we uh, we can feeling of uh, uh, anger, or uh, this type of uh, uh, feelings or rasas uh, included in poem. That dhvani uh, in uh, the. the this uh, type of uh, Rasa Dhvani it, uh, there in poetry. Conclusion. When we read any literature or piece of art, we are received, uh, received some kind of happiness or aesthetic delight from that literary work. All schools of Indian poetics is very important. Without any school or poetics, the work of literature cannot be uh, created. Uh, so every school, every school of uh, the this theory are uh, as uh, equal important as uh, uh, all. Literature only can be created with the creativity and imaginative. And all those schools uh, schools of theory uh, talked about these things. This is my citation. Thank you.
you have mentioned yes you have mentioned the uh, various schools of indian poetics like uh, dhvani or uh, various sampradayas so which one you find more interesting and why Uh, in indian poetics uh, according to my point of view all schools and all theories are as equal, equal uh, has uh, equal importance uh, without any one we can not create a proper work so uh, uh, if uh, you give me a choice to which is my favorite then uh, uh, i cannot tell which is my favorite because uh, for creativity of art or literature i need all the theories uh yes divya my question is uh, would you like to compare indian poetics with uh, western and is western poetics are come from uh, uh, indian poetics or uh, uh, we can say that it's uh, compare with indian poetics yes when i i was uh, reading about indian poetics and western uh, uh, i i read uh, about uh, aristotle's theory of uh, catharsis so uh, in both of uh, but when we see a timeline of uh, that um, may, maybe uh, 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 western theories are uh, inspired by Indi uh, uh, theories of uh, indian poetics uh, rasa theory and catharsis theory all are same but uh, uh, in catharsis catharsis theory uh, we cannot find uh, in detail as like uh, bharat muni give the theory of rasas so both are connected but uh, Um, more rely i i can find a more uh, informative is uh, indian theory what is visible to you now i am only am i visible to you or yes it is yeah okay so i am now am i also uh good afternoon everybody so today i will start with some facial expressions so i hope you will observe that
Okay. So these are the nine rasas of uh, Bharat Muni. And today I am going to deal with the rasa theory with reference to Hemingway's old man and the sea. So this is my personal information. Okay, so first let's have the introduction of uh, Indian poetics and Natya Shastra. So Natya Shastra is uh, uh, written, when it was written, it was applied for both the things, uh, drama and poetry, because at that time it, the, both the things were considered so similar. Also, it focuses on uh, the dramas and poetries in ex existed parts. Natya Shastra is an uh, encyclopedia of the ideas and principles about the dramas as a form of art. And it is believed that uh, Bharata, uh, the founder of Natya Shastra, is belonging from 2nd century BC. Uh, and some, some of other critics also believe that he is from 2nd century AC. Sanskrit poetics spread over the 10,000 years. And the last one, the Sanskrit scholar, the Sanskrit philosopher was from the 17th century and it was Pandit Jagannath. Natya Shastra is the scientific illustration of drama and its representation. The nature of drama, origin, objective of drama, language structure, techniques, characters, types and dialogue and writing. So these are included in the Natya Shastra. So let's uh, first uh, understand what is rasa, the real, real, real rhetorical sentiments that means rasa. We cannot obviously explain the rasa in the theory, but if we try, so according to Bharata, he said, a particular state of mind gives rise to an aesthetic relish which emerges from the combination of various emotional factors. So that is rasa. And rasa is related with the emotional state. That means bhav. So there are four bhavs. Now what is bhav? Bhav is emotions or feelings which is already there, which is already inside the audience or the person. And rasa Rust is the dominant emotional theme that is invoked in the audience that is invoked scene that makes us cry. That is rasa, but how it happens because we have bhav already inside us. So the rasa and bhava, this both things ras and bhav is what establish a relationship between performer and the audience so rasa bhav and there are four bhavs according to uh, uh, bharata that first is vibhav then anubhav then sthayi bhav and then gabhichari bhav so vibhav vibhav or determinants help in the development of feelings of in, in the sentiment there are two type of vibhav alamban and uddipak Alamban is uh, the main action and the Uddipan is the atmosphere that encourages the action. For example, we take the example of Ramayan. Then in that when uh, Hanuman go to take Jadibuti for, for Lakshman because he is very terribly sick and that is Vibhav. And now uh, comes to the Anubhav. Uh, that, that, that is so when he goes the alamban the main action he goes but why is he going because of uh, the the lakshman is sick now comes to the anubhav anubhav is the reaction of vibhav according to bharata each rasa has three subtypes based on the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas so these three are anubhavs and it is also written in bhagavad gita that urdhvam gachanti sattvastha madhi And it's not that in the one rush, this three bhav, anubhav can be applied. For example, grief caused by destruction of the rightness is sattvika. Grief caused by loss of worldly reputation or wealth, that is rajasik. 
and the grief caused by the personal loss or the own uh, personal loss that is tamasic now this thai bhav so the, the nine rasas come in comes in this thai bhav so these are nine uh, rasa virras adbhut ras bhayank uh, bhayankar ras uh, then uh, shantras raudra ras uh, hasya ras karun ras vibhats ras and shrungar ras according to bharat muni there were only eight kind of rasas asthu natya rasas mrata it is written in the natya shastra by bharat muni so he gave only eight rasas the uh, rati hasya shok shok krodh utsah bhaya and jugupsa and vismay and the bhav of these rasas are delight laughter sorrow anger heroism fe- fear disgust and wonder and then the ninth rasa is shant rasa that is bhav is peace and it has been added by abhinav gupta who is philosopher and aesthetician from the caste kashmir he he, he lived around 1950 uh, and 116 ce so the ninth ras is added by abhinav gupta so these are the vyabhichari bhav now vyabhichari bhav is uh, uh, something that is like uh, tied and uh, the uh, tied so it comes and goes these are not the stable but these are frequent bhavs and according to mammad there are 33 vyabhichari bhavs and these are the vyabhichari bhavs now process of rasa how this rasa ras process uh, comes from the artist to the uh, uh, audience or to the person who is watching or listening something the audience so the significant significant contribution of this historical work is the theory of rasa which can be understood as the dynamic experience between the artist means creator artistic expression and the those who receive it so both, all the three uh, uh, the three dynamics are three processes are very much important now summary of the old man see if uh, we refer summary of the uh, if we uh, connect rasa with the old man and the sea very much famous novel of ernest hemingway which was published in 1953 and awarded the pulitzer prize for fiction in 19, uh, 1952 it was published and in the 53 it, it won pulitzer prize so there are only two character and it is very short story but very prominent story of fiction of all the time literature the fisherman named santiago who is he he did, didn't get uh, fish for 84 days manolin is another important character who is a small boy who always helps santiago always be with him and then santiago now again goes to the uh, sea uh, gulf uh, gulf stream uh, and gulf stream he went there and then he de- he tried to uh, take a fish through the harpoon a very big fish named merlin uh, uh, merlin and then uh, he got successful but ultimately uh, after uh, taking that when he was coming back sharks came and eat that fish so this is the st- story but when he returned that he he was still find hope inside him now how the rasas we can find in the old man and the sea so first we can find the uh, uh, is if we start with the veer rasa santiago is uh, the novel begins with his uh, characteristic he is old fisherman of cuba he, though he is weak and old but he is full of courage so he this shows that the veer ras in the santiago he had an adventurous spirit great power of endurance unfalling resolution indominant and he is indominant f- fisherman so this shows veer ras another incident in which we can find the veer ras that when he was uh, fighting he was struggling to get that big fish merlin uh, he tried very hard and this this that that time he had the mixed feelings it has also krodhras inside him while he was struggling very hard so uh, absence of in, infatuation per, perseverance good tactics valor power aggressiveness so these various vibhavs are seen in him when he was struggling very hard but ultimately he got successful that shows the virus inside him the hasiras how hasiras is uh, shown 
finally he got that after fish after 84 days and that is happiness that ras is shown in him the karun ras when he was coming back and that time uh, in the hemi uh, that time the shark came and ate oh, all that that big fish so that uh, develop soro the pity for the santiago inside the audience inside the readers and hemingway when writes in the text that he could not see the fish jumps but only heard the breaking of the ocean and heavy splash as he fell the speed of the line was cutting his hands badly but he had always known this would happen and he tried to keep the cutting across the calloused parts and not let the line slip into the palm nor cut the fingers so this explanation well reader is uh, reading this thing we have uh, we, uh, we the development of karun ras uh, arise in ourselves the shringar ras that has the bhav love bhav so how the love uh, is expressed in this novel uh, santiago and uh, manolin manolin is always trusting in him the santiago santiago he was with him but uh, when he was with uh, he was his parents didn't like that sent uh, manolin is uh, with santiago so once that happens that uh, after 40 days his parents take him back to the home but still he always used to go to the santiago he feeds him uh, he knows that whether he is hungry or not he cheers him he listens him so this way the love for the santiago and manolin this is the uh love that is the bhav is love and the ras is shringar ras inside that uh novel and also one uh one <coughs> ras is karun ras i found that is not written in the gregoric fernando's research but i have found that ras that uh disgust the jugupsa why because uh in the starting when he didn't find fish for the 84 days nobody were trusting on him even the parents of uh, manolin uh, told him that he is the salao now what is salao salao is the worst form of uh, worst form of being unlucky so that uh, arouse arou- the jugupsa the discus inside the parents of the manolin so this rus also can be found in the novel so these are the rasas in old man and the sea these are my references thank you yes uh, who is asking divya parma uh, in your presentation just just a minute in your yes. presentation uh, i find one slide uh, the process of rasa i am not uh, able to understand that point you have mentioned in that slide so can you explain and i have another question can you find any bond or uh, main rasas in that uh, work old man and the sea so first of all i will explain the process of rasa so uh, if i am i, I am uh, expressing my facial expression is the anger's expression uh, in my face so i am artist i am creator now you are audience you are viewer so you have that bhav inside you and that only you can understand my uh, ras so ras bhav is very much very much important and that is why uh, while the artist and the viewer in between them the ras bhav works so process of ras is something that i am showing what i want to take that can be conveyed conveyed through the many medium i am conveying through my expression or i can con- convey with the writing with the writing or of drama or novel or in by making a movie so the, in this medium what i am i am i am showing you the ras the bhav and that also if arise in you then only you can get what i am saying so this is the process of rasa the medium is uh, intermediate or or, or we, we can say the medium is the something which we both have to understand then the creator what the creator is saying you can find and another question you have asked that uh, uh, which ras is important veeras is very important in that 
and the uh, another enthusiastic adbhutras also is there but virras is very much important now why the struggle of him he struggled very hard for getting the fish but ultimately he didn't get that but still there is a famous line from that text that the man cannot be uh, if man can be uh, destroyed but can not not be defeated so uh, virras we after reading that novel we find that trust that no matter we will get uh, failure many times but still we will try that arise hope inside us so the virras is that also the adbhut ras that that uh, we can do anything we can do anything in our life by uh, taking the symbol of santiago is dhvani which process of rasa reflect exactly bharat muni mention which you like most uh, i like all the rasas but in that i like the uh, hasya ras veer ras and uh, also uh, the adbhut ras in in hemming is no well that Uh, reflects most in sorry i forgot that but in uh, hemming hemingway's uh, novel that uh, which you find that exactly bharat muni said can you repeat your question now in uh, you uh, take this novel uh, that uh, in uh, this novel that uh, which rasa process uh, is mentioned uh, by bharat muni in that exactly uh, uh, that bharat muni said that which rasa process that you find uh rasa process starting from the karun ras in the arnest hemingway's novel it starts from the uh, it, no it starts from the uh, disgust then it comes uh, to the uh, to the uh, shrunga the love of santiago and manolin then it, it comes to the virras the, the uh, enthusiastic uh, uh, that is the uh, adbhut ras then it, it comes to the virras and that the novel ends so uh, if we try to research on that uh, these all the rasas are then and it uh, it comes uh, uh, frequently uh, uh, time uh, incident by incident all the rasas are coming here as i see My slide is visible. Yes. Hello, everyone. Myself, Ruhita Dhamelia. My today's topic is new criticism and theory of depersonalization. This is my personal information. What is new criticism? New criticism is the formalist movement in literary theory that organized in the first half half of the century. In new criticism, the texts are considered to be close. In new criticism, theme applied like you have to read. 
only uh, through text you don't need to read uh, through past and the ex personal experience of the poet or whatever the writer or then you have to focus on the text which are given in the book or whatever you are reading therefore readers do not need outside sources like a detail about the author to fully understand literary work in fact new criticism was the reaction toward the biographical and traditional traditional historical criticism which which focused on extra text material to analyze the text this resource i have taken from britannica new critics what is, who are the new critics of the uh, new criticism the new critics or, or uh, formalists use a concept known as a close reading to scrutinize the text or to discover the complex uh, relationship between the element of the text and its general theme such a element in include irony paradox ambiguity metaphor simile tension these all make up the organic unity of the text which basically means the element of the text work together to make the in separable whole according to new critics the structure and meaning of the text are closely connected and cannot be analyzed separately since their main focus is on the text itself they exclude factor like the author's intention readers response and a moralistic bias and historic historical and cultural context from the analysis this is these resources also i take from britannica new critics try, like uh, ts eliot john cru ransom plinth group and uh, i richard who are the new critics uh, the critics of the century this writer were are, all are particular uh, theorist some notable issue they deal to in his uh, theory like uh, ts eliot deal with uh, depersonalization and uh, said that the art of criticize literature was uh, becoming more or a, more of a science the disordering the work of its personal flavor john crew ransom talk about the six uh, uh, six uh, theory and a moral study biographical study and a synonymous and a paraphrase these studies are vastly different different than what new criticism seek to learn by looking at the text itself uh, ts eliot ts eliot was a new in the i uh, new criticism i want to discuss uh, the idea of uh, ts eliot ts eliot was a anglo american uh, essayist publisher playwright poet and a uh, literary and social uh, critic of the 20th century aside from his contribution to modernist literature he was also significant writer of literary criticism while somewhat introspective and critical of his work he once said in his criticism just that uh, by product uh, of uh, his private poetry workshop in a uh, literary theory and criticism he said this line eliot wrote in peculiar sense and uh, artistic or uh, artist or poet must inevitably inevitable be judged by the standard of the past eliot himself implied this concept on the many of his work especially on his fam famous long poem the westland traditional and individual talent this essay was uh, written by the ts eliot is it was a very famous essay of the 20th century in this essay he you talk about the people should follow tradition and the uh, believe in individual talent thus consider it a, a milestone in the field of literary criticism and in the 20th century eliot aim in writing his most famous essay tradition and individual talent is to emphasize the significance of the link of a poem by a poet or other or to the other poet by other authors which was uh, called literary history but there is uh, but in recent time term called intertextuality in a uh, tradition individual talent uh, el uh, ts eliot talk about the uh, Uh, people should follow the traditional writer who make a history the writer who wrote not a, in a there are two ty uh, type of writer who follow two t like a timelessness and the temporariness the you have to become like a timelessness uh, uh, type of writer if you want to be uh, become a uh, famous and uh, for the many centuries theory of depersonalization Yes, Eliot uh, talk about uh, three things in his essay. First, about the poetry and the relation of poet. Second, the theory of depersonalization, and the third, uh, the why he wrote this essay. In theory of depersonalization, he talk about the poet should remain aloof from the poetry. He or she should not to share his personal view in the work, whatever they write. This theory focus on two things: the relation of the poet to the past and the relation of the poem to the author. 
in the traditional individual talent there is a one famous line that tradition is not something dead it is already in living life in this essay eliot told that whatever happened is not a dead the poet who, who is who was died they are still living in the current author and writers uh, if they work uh, good and uh, wrote something interesting theory of depersonalization was a action of a dj what is the actual theory of depersonalization is the action of detaching the person self from the something in the context of tradition and individual talent depersonalization is the process that the traditional poet goes through to make their poetry less personal and more it keeping with the eliot's impersonal theory instead the poet depersonalizes their poetry by working a complex arrangement of common emotions instead of their personal emotion the poet further uh, depersonalizes their work by not using it to express their own feeling and by remaining neutral in the entire writing process in the depersonalization their uh, poetry they become more traditional because they are conscious not of themselves but of the whole history of the poetry when they write they should uh, uh, aware about the history of the poetry they should not uh, uh, think about the current situation and the future but also mention the history and whatever the told in the uh, told in the history as for the first phase he says that the past is never dead it lives in the present and if we approach a poet with an uh, open mind we shall often find that not only the best but the most individual part of his work maybe those in which the dead poets his ancestors ancestor assert their immortality most vigorously again if he is a great poet he he alters his work is in no small scale so what is the sort of flowing out and in but while in giving a, he assert his individuality in taking his uh, he has to repeat, repress it the progress of an artist is to continue self sacrifices a continual ex- existential of a personality the iliad also say that uh, you don't uh, poetry is something uh, to exp- not escape from emotion but to express es- not express from emotion but escape from emotion you should not ex- express your uh, personal idea or uh, or uh, experience ex- uh, but uh, when i read this essay i found uh, one example of the our uh, poem we study the westland in which uh, eliot uh, say that uh, a poet should remain aloof from the whatever he say but if we find that in westland uh, ts eliot share his uh, view uh, his uh, own uh, first of all we are not aware about the what is uh, we think that it is the historical uh, poem uh, in which he share the myth and everything but when uh, we read uh, uh, elizabeth uh, pound then we come to know that it's uh, his autobiographical uh, poem in which he, he shared that uh, his personal experience with his wife and uh, his uh, uh, lifetime and uh, childhood so we can say that uh, eliot uh, himself was not uh, follow his own rule that uh, poet should uh, remain aloof from the poetry or the work of art but uh, then uh, i uh, read another essay in which i find that uh, eliot says that if you want to make uh, Uh, poetry about yourself then you have to reveal it in the poem that you are uh, writing and it's about you we can conclude that a hidden inner self of the poet which uh, resemble the details in the poem depict in eliot's impersonal theory it is through myth allusion and dramatic monologue all used as a objective corrective correctiveness correctiveness and the eliot stimulously describe personal suffering and uh, renders it external and therefore impersonal eliot succeed in the finding objection objective expression for the uh, purely subjective by fusing the impersonal with the mythic eliot is capable of a continual self sacrifice masking his experience in his person the voice of the westland are the both past and present personal and universal universal autobiographical autobiographical and historical a poem both richly historical and painfully autobiographical thank you these are my citation
ओके ध्रुविता व्हाट इज योर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू अपॉन द सेकंड पॉइंट पॉइंट ऑफ थियरी ऑफ डीपर्सनलाइजेशन पोएम्स रिलेशंस रिलेशन ऑफ पोएम्स विद ऑथर्स लाइफ और कैन यू फाइंड इट इज अ प्रॉब्लमेटिक और समथिंग according to me if poet uh, want uh, write art is a uh, is personal choice whatever they want to write they can write but uh, if if they write personal experience uh, then they can but uh, they should uh, say in the work that these are their personal experience or what Yeah, so, uh, Dhruvita, my question, my question is, uh, can you find any work of author that follows uh, Eliot's depersonalization? The work which follows depersonalization theory. Recently, I am not able to recall any work. If you have another question, then ask. Uh, okay, I'm. I'm uh, 
आई एम भावना सोसा टुडे माय टॉपिक इज वक्रोक्ति एज अ थियरी दिस इज माय पर्सनल इंफॉर्मेशंस इंट्रोडक्शन अ वक्रोक्ति इज अ काइंड ऑफ डिवाइस यूज्ड बाय द पोएट्स ऑफ एवरी एज एंड कंट्री व्हिच कैन बी सिंपली डिफाइंड एज अ डेविएंट लैंग्वेज बाय डेविएंट लैंग्वेज वी कैन वी मीन that is uh, it is uh, not straight and uh, simple expressions uh, about kuntak kuntaka was a kashmiri sanskrit poetician and uh, literary theorist who is remarkable for his work vakrokti uh, zivimtam in which uh, he postulated uh, the vakrokti uh, siddhant or the theory of of uh, oblique expression Uh, which he considers uh, as uh, uh, the hallmark of creative uh, literature kuntaka the greatest expert uh, exponent of the theory of vakrokti uh, is one of the most original thinkers produced by uh, the ancient india and uh, his uh, formulations uh, after uh, the most striking similarities Uh, with modern western and uh, analytic uh, criticism uh, kuntaks uh, uh, kuntaks uh, nations of vakrokti kuntaka wrote his theory based on the central uh, premise that the charisma of uh, poetry uh, is grounded on uh, strikingness of expressions so vakrokti uh, avoids uh, expression of ideas by using uh, conventional mode of speech instead uh, uh, it demands the use of uh, striking words uh, this is unlike scriptures which uh, require uh, one to use uh, established word or ways meaning of vakrokti the term vakrokti uh, uh, is made up of uh, two uh, components uh, vakra which means crooked oblique or uh, unique and uh, yukti uh, which means expression or speech a uh, definition of vakrokti according to kuntaka uh, vakrokti is the source of beauty is uh, kavya which is quite opposite of uh, to the uh, description of uh, things uh, as it is uh, dandis uh, says uh, vakrokti as a poetic figure except uh, subhakti uh, vamana considers uh, vakrokti as a special poetic figure of uh, based on lakshana then uh, bhama bhama according to uh, vakrokti as a mode of expression uh, because it is the fundamental principle of uh, figurative uh, expressions then uh, six types of uh, vakrokti uh, phonetic uh, level uh, the uh, lexical uh, level the grammatical level the set, uh, sentential level and uh, the Uh, context uh, contextual level uh, and uh, the compositional level then conclusion uh, to conclude uh, vakrokti was taken up uh, for discussion by uh, various scholars like uh, bhama dandi vamana uh, rudra act it was uh, kuntaka who uh, elevated uh, it to the, the status of an uh, uh, all pre, uh, prevailing uh, poetic concept its kuntakas uh, vakrokti jeevitam uh, is considered to be uh, the masterpiece of uh, vakrokti uh, theory then citations and then oh yes found up can you ex- so can you explain any one type of uh, vakrokti you have mentioned the six types so any one yes uh, six layers of uh, vakrokti then uh, 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 sentential uh, uh, vakrokti is including the six level and uh, is which uh, has a uh, 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 is a uh, oblique of a uh, uh, whole sentence uh, a thousand varieties uh, and uh, uh, 
so lot of figure is like a natural or a hard uh, impose Which type of Bhakrati you like the most and why? Grammatically, uh, grammatical uh, Vakrupti is uh, most uh, because uh, say, uh, his uses of uh, 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 verb, verb and uh, So my um, good. good afternoon everyone, my dear friends and respected sir. My today's topic is use of figurative language in poem a red red rose by Herbert Burns. Uh, this is my personal information. Contained writer's introduction. I Richard's four kind of meanings, use of figurative language in poem a red red rose and conclusion. Uh, this information is taken from Britannica and uh, Poetry Foundation of the writer I. A. Richardson. Uh, I. A. Richardson 
uh, full name is Ivor Armstrong Richardson. Uh, he was a critic. a teacher who was highly influ- uh, influenced in developing a new way of reading poetry and leads to new criticism and uh, he also uh, both uh, worked with uh, ck ogden and uh, richard created the teaching tool basic english and simplified version of english language and uh, uh, these are the scholarly work of i richardson practical criticism the philosophy of uh, Rhetoric, the meaning of meaning, which was uh, worked with uh, uh, C.K. and both worked together in this. And Richardson uh, worked uh, taught in Cambridge University and Har- uh, Harvard University and died in 1979. Mm, these are the four uh, meanings uh, I. Richardson has given. A uh, first is sense. Uh, sense is uh, that. referred to by writer feelings means how they are writing what are their emotions what are, are their attitude pleasures uh, this all the things are expressed in the feelings next is tone uh, tone is uh, uh, tone is the writer's attitude to his uh, readers or audience in which language or in which tone in uh, recognizing how the writer is writing and how the reader is recognizing it and the fourth is intention in intention the writer's aim is to be conscious uh, with what expression with what intention and with what att- attention he is writing and that is uh, shown in intention uh, now i will compare uh, now i will say about the figurative language used in the poem red red rose in this the poet has used the metaphor of natural object which is ro- uh, rose which is uh, he used for his beloved in first stanza the writer has compared his love with a fresh rose and he has uh, uh, and second he compares her with a nicely played melody in in this stanza uh, the writer has compared uh, his beloved with a red rose which is a natural object and a metaphor used Uh, and in the second while the first comparison describes her beauty and second tells about her temperament she is beautiful lady and nice temperament and kind heart and in the second and third stanza the speaker tells about the never ending love for her be- beloved he used uh, the uh, metaphor and the language which is uh, surreal and which doesn't happen in this he has used uh, uh the lines in the poem till the seas gang dry till the seas gang dry my dear and the rocks melt with the sun i will love the seas till my dear while the sands of life shall run uh, this uh, he promises her that uh, her love will uh, uh, he will love her till the end of the sea goes dry which is impossible and in the st- uh, third stanza line he compares the love to her till the rock melts with the sun and this also are the lines which he has written for his beloved uh, beloved but which are not which is not going to happen in the last line of uh, third stanza he is telling that he would love till the last day of his life he also uses the imaginary of seas drying rocks melting with the sun and the sands of uh, life uh, uh, running he uses imaginary express unborn and never ending love with her he uh, uh, in the the symbolism represents the quality and symbolic meaning uh, the red rose draws strength for the love and romance and symb- uh, symbolizes the love between uh, speaker and her beloved uh, in this even the imaginary is also used five senses are used and the poet used three visual imaginaries in this poem oh my love is like a red red rose and the rock melts with the sun while the sands of the life shall run and even in this poem the hyperbole is also used here the lines are till a seas gang dry there is a hyperbole seas never dry and the rock melts with the sun this is also hyperbole rock never melts the tone of this poem is exhaling love it is passionate loving and celebratory he tells uh, the love he will and the last stanza assures the infinity of love 
in this poem the writer is using a, a, a the figurative language uh, like metaphor hyperbole and uh, he is using this for showing the love for her beloved in the last stanza the writer is bidding farewell to her beloved and he even tells uh, the speaker tells is planning to live on journey the beloved doesn't need to worry through because the speaker promises to return even if the journey is 10000 miles long and last conclusion here the writer gives his figurative language to express his love towards beloved he compares a red red rose and also tells he will love her till the sea is dry and the rocks melt which is impossible because sea never dry and rocks never melt uh, these are my citations thank you Uh, amina uh, what does modify writers ex expressions means uh, i am not able to understand your question uh, what does uh, modify writers expression but in what sense you are asking you you mentioned four points yes uh yes i mentioned the four points uh, feeling tone intention so uh, they they had four points uh, it is uh, given by i a richardson in practical criticism uh, the function of language is uh, that shows that how the writer are expressing uh, expressing their feelings while writing this uh, four points are shown in that feeling tone intention as you mentioned in your second slide that i richard give the idea of creating the poetry can you give any one rule of creating the poetry mm -hmm. means i i richardson poetry as you mentioned that i richard give the rule, give the idea of rule creating the poetry so can you give any one idea of any rule, one rule i don't know proper but in the the practical criticism of this four language uh, in uh, this function of uh, languages he is giving this four ideas of uh, poem that how the writer starts writing by these four ideas and what are their intentions were writing and how the uh, readers can understand how the writer is writing Okay, before I give comments from there, some of you have referred to the material website and the resource given on the website also. Those who have not referred to, you also uh, refer to this material to prepare for your answers. Also, okay, exam answers. So on this site uh, we have. uh bharat muni ganesh devi's uh, reference you will find and uh, it will open in this way so this is uh, the book title is uh, indian literary criticism theory and criticism it is edited by g n devi yes, it is edited and this is one chapter bharat muni is the title of a chapter uh, not the title of the book title of the book is indian literary criticism theory and criticism edited by g n devi 
and in this uh, he has uh, given some interesting english words for the sanskrit uh, which are quite accepted this is this translation is done by gk but which again is one of the authentic translations uh, and here you will find uh, this eight rhetorical sentiments ras is known as that some of you have used this in your presentations yeah. Uh, if you have not used, then this, are, this is the word, uh, rhetorical sentiments. Uh, it is a phrase for ras. Uh, and then emotional bhav, uh, emotional states uh, is, is how it is rendered, bhav. Then sanchari and vyabhichari, transient uh, and the psycho, physical condition, uh, that is sattvic, uh, mental conditions, uh, sthayi bhav. So these words uh, you have to take from this material. Uh, if you have not referred to, at least for your exam purpose, do not forget to refer this. Uh, relation between bhav and ras. Vibhav, anubhav, these all things are referred here. And this also model spectator. Okay? This also is very important. Uh, and it is also mentioned that uh, it is all for audience. Uh, those who are watching the play. Okay? So a spectator uh, who is an ideal spectator, who is a model spectator, that also is referred here. Who can watch the dramatic performance with all his senses, uh, undistracted. Uh, is very pure and honest. Uh, is expert in judging the pros and cons who can ignore a fault and lovingly appreciate merit to be regarded as a spectator so who is this ideal and then there are variety of spectators huh? child brave person and they all have their own different temperaments to understand the play uh, the wise uh, it says the wise are always pleased with the representation of all matters of principle Children or untutored men, that is called murak, murkha, huh? that is how it is written there. Untutored men, children or and untutored men and women. Also, like we know traditionally, women normally are considered as not so educated. So they all go with children, untutored men, murak and women are always pleased with things evoking laughter and with costumes makeup and sceneries only <laughs> so <laughs> women children murk they are always attracted to makeup uh, and the outward scenery and other kinds of things only well this is what uh, is written uh, in uh, uh, by bharat muni in natya sastra uh, way back <laughs> these things are written and this is translated by gk but uh, which is used by ganesh devi uh, in the work also so this also uh, don't forget to refer yes yes Hmm. You can speak the unmute and speak there. Yeah. Uh, sir, I have a question that while we are uh, uh, citing this uh, translation, the Ganesh Devi's work, so what do we have to uh, cite in that? Because we are unable to find many information in the book. Yes, so you have to find the resource of the book. And the book is in the library. Or you can find it online also. What is this full title book? So from the title, you have to go to the full title. And the third page, as I have told you, from there you have to get the source. The book is also in the library also. Okay, so this uh, is that reference that uh, you have to uh, refer to when you uh, see, when you prepare for your exam. A few more things we'll put on our blog also. There is another writer known as V.S. Setu Raman. V.S. Setu Raman and his book is Indian Aesthetics by V.S. Setu Raman. That also is... Uh, a, a good book to be referred to. This also was in our library. Uh, this 
so that also we can see uh, Indian aesthetics. Let me share this page. An introduction by V. S. Setu Raman. But V. S. Setu Raman has written uh, another. He has edited another book also on contemporary uh, Western poetics, contemporary literary theory and criticism. Uh, in that also he has given a brief detail. Uh, brief in brief he has written, not in detail, but in brief. Uh, so that also is useful. So that I will put it on my blog from where you can access uh, that also. Okay, so let me give Okay, so as such most of you have done quite well. Uh, as if there is uh, content wise, the slides are well prepared. Most of you all have got that grip over content uh, and putting the things in a proper way also. Somewhere we need to work on questions and answers. Uh, proper questions, the question that can be understood. Also like uh, you are supposed to have curiosity for question. That is not there. Like it is compulsory to ask. So most of you are asking the question. So you really want to know uh, uh, from the presentation that is going on or something that that person can explain, uh, which in a limited time is not able to explain, but something more the person can say. Uh, so that question, if you ask, then it is very interesting. Right? So that is what the feeling we get that it is compulsory. So you are asking the question, but not out of curiosity to know. So the quality of questions can be improved and the same way answers also. You can try to understand the question in a proper context and then try to give the answer. Uh, most of the things were good. Hiruva, Hinaba, okay, Vakrokti, Rasa, then Himanshi on uh, the poem was well analyzed. M.K. Gandhi, Amisha also uh, worked very well on that poem. Uh, uh, Veer Ras uh, or Rodra Ras uh, is what is the, the basic things that you find there. Uh, there was a good question there. Uh, I think uh, Hinaba asked the question about Angik uh, Abhinay uh, in that. So if you see the performance, that is also called, known as performance poem. So it becomes a different genre where somebody or writer is performing on the street, on the stage. So uh, here uh, Sabah Nakvi is performing the video that uh, you might have seen uh, where she is performing on the street. So that Angi Kabine also is very important, which also is speaking about Rodra, uh, Veeras that is getting reflected uh, in her uh, gestures, uh, facial expressions and the body language also. So that, that also is a part of uh, this Natya Shastra. Uh, so even if there is a poem, but poem is performed and you are studying the performance. We come to that point also when we'll see Dhvanis also that how a Natya Shastra we try to apply in poem or a novel can be problematic also because it is basically for Natak, for seeing, for performance and reading is a passive activity as such. Natak is an, an active performance. Both the performer as well as the audience is active yeah, when they are there whereas uh, reading is a passive activity so that that point needs to be addressed also uh, divya sheta also did well but you have mixed up apa and mla citation there are few errors in the citation but it is repeated so i'm not drawing attention to that now huh? that you yourself can understand where you might have made uh, some mistake divya parmar also did well Dwani, when she was reading about novel, uh, this uh, old man and the sea. So uh, many people are reading uh, novels also. Uh, but this point we need to clarify that actually this is not for novel. Uh, it is for Natak. And there are all those things which are for the performance. Now, if you're trying to apply on this, there might be limitations. 
and with those limitations in mind we are reading so that bridge we have to build that it, we know it is only for the performance it is not for a novel but still the novel we can visualize the novel we can visualize the performance of the novel and what we are visualizing we are trying to analyze we are analyzing the visualized performance of that that or if it is a film adaptation you can easily say the film adaptation then you have to talk about the hero the actor and how how that actor has done that particular part that all needs to be analyzed so then there is an actor there and you are working on how the actor has done so if you'll see two or three films based on one novel then all actors might have improvised things in a different way also so there the rush may differ also somewhere in a given situation when the protagonist is fighting with the fish some may show a kind of a rodra or some may show a veer so what is difference between rodra and veer that we we get a space to analyze that that veer needs to have anger but on all anger can be virta <laughs> then we can say no it, it is a sign of a darpok or a psychologist will say that the people who are angry are afraid so uh, how this this gives us a space to analyze uh, several things with the help of rust theory uh, Sh- divya sheta asked you a question about how the rust is like flowing so like trajectory of rust this is a good good topic to see that how any of the performance is uh, taking an entry into a text with which rust and then how it is moving from one rust to another words rust is there any combination that if you move from one rust to another then the effect is heightened or not so sometimes we find that in a contrast way we get heightened effect so from shant if you move to speed or something anger something vigorous uh, then we get a better effect so most of the narratives if you see films for example as an example in films then uh, before the final momentum all the films slows down a little bit that, that that part will slowing down because now they want to pick up uh, the high speed towards the end of the cinema so little bit slowing down is necessary so that slowing down has some effect on our mind and then when the speed comes again adrenaline uh, emotions hormones are rising uh, the the trafficking of emotion becomes better so that is the tra- trajectory uh, into the performance where somewhere you deliberately slow down so that the effect of the speed is felt uh, by the audience or in the same way shringar and vibhats uh, or how people work with contrasting uh, things uh, druvita uh, worked on uh, traditional individual talent uh, theory of depersonalization that also was good uh, your question was uh, uh, yeah writers uh, so one one uh, who are the writers uh, somebody asked you this question that who worked on depersonalized you remember so t s eliot himself was that person until the biographical things were not realized but that also is in uh, in this poem only uh, that is uh ts eliot's westland the in other poems still uh, we find that he is very objective uh, when he is presenting uh, uh, those ideas their four quartets and other poems are there where he is uh, uh, exemplifying his uh, depersonalization also okay. william shakespeare is one famous example uh, who has wrote about so many things and it is nearly impossible to find who is the person william shakespeare behind all this drama comedies tragedies uh, histories sonnets so people have lots of theories that were bacon was bacon william shakespeare or whether earl of oxford was william shakespeare or who really was shakespeare or was there anybody like this or there were a group of people writing in the name of william shakespeare why we have this because it is difficult to find one person behind all those things that is also great work of depersonalization that one can uh, see uh, there even if you go to great mahakavyas uh, all epic poems uh, iliad odyssey mahabharat ramayan you find that very objectively in a much depersonalized manner all those things are written and so you have a device somebody is telling somebody is writing that is a device to distance yourself and so you are aloof 
and then all the narrations are made there. Uh, Bauna also uh, uh, did well, read the, the things well. You need to like whatever we have said, that is what you have to do in the previous things also. Loudness of voice, uh, proper answer of questions you have to think of. It. Amina also presented well uh, on I.R. Richards uh, things there. Too. Okay, so that was uh, for the day. I have shared a couple of things with you like uh, your Google Classroom task pending complete that you fill up. So tomorrow we can have an overview of uh, that work. Tomorrow we have odd even numbers uh, as a reminder odd in the morning even in the afternoon. Uh, so be careful about uh, that uh, also. So wish you all the best for the last presentation tomorrow uh, on the history of uh, this 20th century uh, literature. We end our session.